Good morning. Happy Easter. Just want to uh, thank everybody for watching these videos and thank everybody for their prayers. Continue to pray for one another in these days. And again, a special thanks for those who have given financially to this ministry. We've received, uh, we've received your envelopes and your checks and your Easter offering and just a word of thanks and appreciation uh, for your faithfulness through this time. I'd like to begin with a call to worship. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Say this with me. We have an inheritance which is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. Amen. Happy Easter. Christ the Lord is risen today. Praise God for that truth. This morning we're reading from Luke's account of the resurrection morning, Luke 24. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came to the tomb, bringing with them the spices they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. They went in but did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men stood by them in dazzling clothes. So the women were terrified and bowed down to the ground. Why are you looking for the living among the dead? They asked. He is not here, but he has risen. Remember how he spoke to you while he was still in Galilee, saying it is necessary for the Son of Man to be betrayed into the hands of sinful men? Be crucified and rise on the third day. And they remembered his words. 
Returning from the tomb, they reported all these things to the eleven and to all the rest, Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women were telling these things to the apostles. But these words seemed like nonsense to them, and they did not believe the women. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. He, when he stooped in to, to see, he saw only the linen cloths. So he went away amazed at what had happened. Thank be to God for his word for us today and always. Amen. When the body begins to move, the funeral is over. A moving body totally messes up a funeral. And let me assure you, this morning, we celebrate the fact that Jesus is moving. Too many people are dying with unlocked dreams and unfulfilled destinies. The disease that threatens humankind right now is not a virus, but dullness. We've created elaborate little worlds of control and predictability. We live in a repetitive seven-day week with habitual little schedules. If there is anything we're learning at this time, it's that our lives oftentimes are not based on faith. We aren't living out of the unseen reality of God's love and God's desire to be intimately involved in every detail of our lives. But what happens is when the unexpected occurs, we are forced to stay in our homes, to social distance, to wear masks, to, to not go out. See, we like, we like when we know things and we see things. We like things that we can predict and we can control. But today, on this Resurrection Sunday, when the body begins to move, the funeral is over. Jesus is moving. Everything changes. We no longer are seeing reality as we thought it was, but now we get to see truth. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is the basis of all reality. It's the basis for all truth. So I want to ask you this morning, do you really want to know the truth? Do you really want to know the truth? Or, or one way a person put it, can you handle? Can you handle the truth? Because if you really want to know the truth, you have to confront the paralysis of fear and doubt. Matthew tells us that Jesus had been in the tomb for almost three days. And on that day, Mary Magdalene, another Mary, came to the tomb. And we read in Matthew 28, verse 4, The guards at the tomb were scared to death. They were so frightened they could not move. See, fear and doubt results in paralysis. Have you ever had one of those dreams at the most terrifying part of the dream you couldn't move? You, you couldn't do anything. You try to scream and nothing comes out. You're paralyzed. It's like you're trying to run in cement. Fear and doubt steal dreams. Predictability and faith cannot coexist. I mean, I wonder what happens when we, when we grew up as, as children. We had this incredible ability to begin life with faith. We had dreams. We had possibilities. Children can see things that adults cannot see. Children hear voices that adults cannot hear. Children dream dreams that it seems like we can no longer dream. And in that sense, I think children are a lot like God. They can create something out of nothing. Anybody remember, anybody remember playing when you were a child? I remember playing in, in, in forts. We used to try to make a fort, but we lived on a dead-end street. And they used to dump leaves. All the leaves they collected in the fall, they would dump them at, at the next street over, at the end of the street, a dead-end street. And I remember those leaves piled high, falling down, and just piled high, packed. And then what we would do, we would build tunnels and areas of, to meet down in those leaves. I can still remember the, the, the smell of the air and the leaves. It's amazing the things we did with our imagination when we were children to create something out of nothing. 
When we go, go to bed at night, I remember going to bed at night and, and praying that prayer. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. Do you remember praying that? Death and, and all that stuff was scary, but we had faith because our parents told us that God was big enough to hold us. We went to bed. We didn't lack fear. There were monsters in the closets. There were monsters under the bed. We went to sleep knowing, though, that God was big enough to take care of us. And somewhere when we became adults, in our fear now, we stay awake. We can't get to sleep. Our minds are racing. And we lay there and we worry. What happened? As, as kids, we went to sleep and anticipated waking up the next morning for a, a brand new day. What happened? When the body begins to move, the funeral is over. See, Jesus is moving. When was it that we quit hearing the voice of God? Jesus is moving and you can listen to the voice. Do you hear what the voice is? is saying the very first words out of the mouth of Jesus on that resurrection Sunday don't be afraid when we quit living on the edge of the mystical kingdom I remember the day I remember when my mom and dad told me that that there were bugs and and that the leaves were dirty and and I'd come home smelly and I was told not to go back again and play at the end of the street in the leaf pile it's funny now when I when I think about a, a big pile of leaves I, I don't think about jumping in it anymore I, I think to myself oh, I better be careful I don't know what's underneath those leaves maybe there's ticks in those leaves I might get bit I might get one of those red spots on me. I might get Lyme's disease. I might get sick. And then I won't have the energy to do what I want to do if I'm, if I'm sick. The faith and dreams and possibilities that I had as a child somehow turned into control and tameness and predictability. And sometimes even fear. Somewhere along the, the line, we quit listening to the voice of God, which speaks inside all of us. It was so loud when you were a child. The, the voice of God was so very real when you were a child. It was a voice of wonder. It was a voice of amazement. I mean, I remember also at the end of our street, there was a, a creek that went through down by the, in, in the woods. And I remember gathering sticks and, and rocks and branches. And I remember trying to block the water and divert the water from one place to another. It was amazing to see how the water moved. And just a few rocks and sticks would divert that water. We would play in the woods for hours, imagining things, thinking of all kind of crazy things. As adults, we can't have that kind of unpredictable behavior going on. We need to train our children for tameness and sameness. We were people who went to bed knowing that monsters were there, but we had a God who was big enough to take care of us. Somehow, we became victims of cultural cloning. Culture and reason replaced the voice of God. Wonder and awe turned into sameness and tameness. It's even how we view Christians. Sometimes we view Christians that, that way as well. Christians that are, you know, Christians are, are tame. They're, they're predictable. Christians are boring people. Christians are always supposed to be nice. They're supposed to be tame. Let's remember this day that after the resurrection of Jesus, the followers of Jesus were anything but predictable and tame. The book of Acts calls Christians the, the people that were upsetting the world. They were anything but tame and predictable. You either had to join them or you stoned them, put them in jail and fed them to the lions. But you could not remain neutral. In fact, these followers of Jesus were considered to be a cult. I looked up the definition of a cult in the dictionary. It says, a group of people, uh, followers, who are fanatical about what they believe and follow their leader. Now, I'm not talking about the Jim Jones type of cult. Jim Jones's body didn't move after his funeral. 
I'm talking about Jesus and Jesus moving. That reality. So here's the question. Do you really want to know the truth? If you really want to know the truth, when you know it, you've got to do something with it. Listen, Jesus on that first Easter morning, again in Matthew 28, verse 10, he was talking to the women because the women were the first ones that showed up to the tomb. The men were somewhere else. Maybe they had more important things to do. Maybe they were filled with doubt and, and fear. But here's what Jesus said. He said, go tell my brothers that they are to go to Galilee and that I will appear to them there. What does that mean? See, Jesus says, if you want to experience the truth, first you have to do what I say, then you will see. Now we say, well, can't you just give me a sign? Can't you just kind of move the, the roof off my house or, or lift a chair into the air? Show me first and then I'll do what you say. But it doesn't work that way. Do you really want to know the truth? First, you must do what Jesus says. And then you will experience the evidence of the resurrection in your life. First, you must do what Jesus says. And then you will experience the evidence of the resurrection in your life. Knowing the truth in, in the 21st century means that we have to take spiritual initiative. You and I have to first do whatever it takes or costs. Now you know you're going to die one day. If you're 20 years old, you live an average life expectancy, you've got about 55 years left. If you're 75, get ready. How do, you, how do any of us in, in, the, in this blink of an eye that we call life have time to pursue anything else but truth and to take initiative to what God wants us to do in our lives? It, it's time to get up off our backsides and do what we know. Not what we feel, but what we know. Now, one of the things this time has allowed us to do is to, to watch movies. And I love movies. I love old movies. Especially when there are these, these lines that have deeper meaning. I watched a movie recently, The Matrix. The character Morpheus. He's like a prophet of God. And he hits the nail on the head in this comment he gives to young Neo. Neo is seeking the truth. And here's the statement that he makes. There is a difference between knowing the path and walking it. There is a difference between knowing the path and walking it. How many years have you known the path? No one can teach me this. No one can do this for me. Because Jesus has come up from the grave. Because he is alive, that changes Everything. That's the basis of all reality. I now have to take the initiative. I have to make the commitment. I have to live in dangerous proximity to the one who has come up from the grave. Thomas was a disciple of Jesus. He's often called Doubting Thomas. On that first Easter when Jesus appeared to all the disciples in a room behind closed doors, Thomas for some reason was not there. Today, if Thomas is listening to this message, he would have, he'd be majorly annoyed. He would say, or he might even post out, now wait a minute, wait a minute, Pastor. I'm not going to believe this just because you say this. I mean, other people can just sit around and have a comfortable belief that they accept that, that someone hands this truth down from on high, but I will not believe it until I see it for myself. I'm not going to take somebody else's word unless I can come into dangerous proximity with the one who came up from the grave, unless I can touch those nail holes in his hands with my hands, I will not believe it. Friends, life is short. In the blink of an eye, we will stand before the face of God. God will ask each of us this question. What did you do with my son? Today is not a funeral. The body moved. It messed up the funeral. That changes everything. 
If you want to know the truth, then it is time to take spiritual initiative, to take responsibility for becoming the person God created you to be. And how do you do that? The Bible says there's three things that we need to do. First, we need to repent. To repent. To repent literally means to go 180 degrees in the opposite direction. I've been going this way, focused on my goals and my agenda, but no more. Because the body has moved, and because that's the basis of all reality, I'm turning my back on me and my agenda and my goals and my tameness and my sameness, my conditioning to cultural cloning, and now I'm going to move this way to the voice of the Lord who calls me. To repent means to turn your back on everything that is not God and walk to the one who has risen from the grave. Repent. The second thing we need to do is believe. The Bible says those who believe in Jesus will find life. Belief is not the absence of doubt. Most of us can relate to the, the guy in the Bible that, that came to Jesus and said, Jesus, will you heal my son? And Jesus said, anything is possible for the one who believes. And the man said to Jesus, I believe, help my unbelief. Every one of us has some faith and some doubt. We have some faith and some doubt. If we're not, we're already dead. But Jesus said it like this, it takes the faith the size of a mustard seed. A small, small seed. A small amount of faith. If you focus that faith on what God has done in Jesus Christ, you can say to any obstacle that stands in your way, get out of my way and watch what happens. Repent and believe. And third, third is do. Every decision or action that you make in your life will be based now on what God has done through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Do. I will take responsibility for who I am. I will take responsibility for my spiritual growth. Repent. Believe. Do. As we celebrate the resurrection, as we remember that Jesus is not dead, but Jesus is alive, would you take a moment and just bow your head in reflection. Do you remember when you knew God was big enough to hold you? Do you remember when there were no monsters under the bed that God was big enough to overcome and protect you? Can you pray again that prayer? Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul will keep. And when I die before I wake, Lord, I pray my soul will be with you. You created me and you prepared me, Lord. Would you pray these words after me? Lord, today I give you all that I know about me. Lord, today I give you all that I know about me. To all that I know about you. To all that I know about you. I give myself to you. I give myself to you. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. For your purpose. For your purpose. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Remember, it is one thing to know the path and another thing to walk the path. Repent, believe, do, because you have amazing potential. And when death is reversible, and Jesus proved it is, anything, anything can happen. Amen? Amen. God bless you today. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Go forth serving God. Go forth serving others. 
In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. God bless you and God bless your family. Amen.